where it- hello everybody and welcome back to another exciting episode of the unnecessary gentleman a podcast where we talk about movies television video games and all kinds of other stuff as always i have my favorite co-host sean doyle say hey sean hello <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, but we also have someone else with us, don't we, Sean? A very special person. Someone who's a lot more special than you. Wow. This nice person sitting across from me trying not to make eye contact because it's a little bit creepy. <laughs> it's, it's one of the reasons why he's the best. But everyone, I'd like to introduce you to uh, our good friend, Dylan Gaiman. What's up, Dylan? Hey, guys. What's going on? <laughs> uh, how you been, man? I've been good. Just working and working. And working. Well, you think you're you think you're done working? Think you could uh, maybe help us out with this podcast? I he, think I can help. He's on break from work right now. He's got <laughs> to wrap this up in thirty minutes. <laughs> he's here because he cares, Sean. Which is more than I can ever say for you and your wow. your, <laughs> your attitude towards Shots this podcast. Shots fired. <laughs> Damn. Burn. Uh, well, anyway, uh, as I said before. The unnecessary gentleman. A lot of I feel like some people know who we are by now. If not, I mean now you know. But uh, Dylan, uh, you're a big supporter of the show. Probably our biggest yes. supporter. Maybe yes. maybe our only supporter. I don't know. I'd like to maybe. write out <laughs> you write out that fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Some <laughs> complete with graphic uh, illustrations and sketches. I looked I was, through them all. I was going to show it to like some of my younger family members, but no. <laughs> it's like a solid R rating on that thing. <laughs> Maybe when they're old enough, they could see some of it. Uh, great colors, too, by the way. Um, but anyway, I thought since you already know kind of how the show works, uh, you know we do a bit of news to start out. Oh, yes. So you want to, you got any news, newsy news uh, going on in the world that you'd like to share with us and the listeners? Oh, well, there's plenty of new Star Wars news. Ooh, what kind of Star Wars news? Let's see. Well, we obviously got the new teaser trailer for Star Wars The Last Jedi. We did. Which was the sequel to The Force Awakens, in case some of you are getting confused with these spinoffs in between. But <laughs> oh, That was a great trailer. Oh, actually, though. I feel like we might need to save that for because that's that's actually going to be a big segment of our of today's show. So we're gonna we're gonna save a bit of that that juicy oh yeah trailer this, news. This show is all about trailers. <laughs> that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> it is. Um, but since you mentioned Star Wars, uh, there was a bit of news that came out, um, along with the trailer about Carrie Fisher and uh, kind of her role that's in um the rest of this trilogy. Now recently, uh. Todd Fisher, um, her brother, went and said, you know, how do how would you uh, make a Star Wars movie set in this particular timeline without without Carrie? The answer is you don't. And then he also said that she her likeness will appear in uh, episode nine. And everyone was like, yeah, that's that's great stuff. Um, We're glad we kind of finally worked that out. You know, it's kind of been up in the air due to her passing. Well, Kathleen Kennedy uh, just came out yesterday and said that uh, Todd Fisher is a great guy, but he doesn't really know what he's talking about. He's a he's a liar, that Todd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, she uh, she recently just came out in an interview and said uh, that no, Carrie is not set to appear all in episode nine. Um, I think she also said that he just got confused or something. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, so I guess Dylan, you're a huge Star Wars fan, as me and yes. Sean both know, and we've been talking about this for a while. How do you feel about you know Carrie Fisher's passing and where it kind of leaves her role in the Star Wars universe? Well, that just really depends on what all they had planned for. Her. I mean, she didn't have quite a big role as Han Solo in um, The Force Awakens. But, um, yeah, there was there's definitely still some loose ends to be tied up with her character as far as uh, her being Kylo Ren's mother and her reuniting with her brother Luke and where she would stand with him and how their relationship would somewhat end. So there's still a good chunk of uh, Princess Leia's um, story that needs to be finished. 
So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of tie all that up since she's passed. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's one of those things, like, and I've talked about this with Sean before. She not only is her character is such an important part of um, the Star Wars universe, especially this new trilogy, but just that the actress herself, like, and meant so much to a lot of people. And this definitely has created a situation of, they've already said they're not going to, you know, recreate her likeness um, digitally. So if, you know, are they going to rewrite her, you know, just to get her out, her character out, maybe say like, oh, you know, she's over here. She, you know, was hurt in the previous movie and has to recover on this planet or, you know, even past. Or do you even go as far as to recast her? I, I want to recast. No, no, you don't do that. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what, like, how long she's going to be in episode eight. Because I think, you know, Star Wars is all about redemption within the Skywalker family. Because they're always screwing I, stuff up. <laughs> they're, they're always just, they're a loose unit, man. They and are. I think... <laughs> I think they were leading up to um, Kylo Ren was going to find redemption within his mother because, you know, he killed not only his father, but, you know, the love of her life. Yeah. And being being his mother, she's probably going to forgive him. And that's where he can finally start to, you know, start his path to get back to the, the light side of the force. So I'm curious to see, like, how they have to change all this up now. Yeah, and it is one of those things that they've they have said that what like Carrie will be a big part of uh, Episode Eight, even before her passing, they were pushing that because it she was not like Dylan said not a huge part of the last movie, but the way that movie ended did set up a lot for her to do, obviously with uh, Kylo Ren. So it's it, I guess it honestly just depends on how much of that particular story they were able to get from this next movie and where that can lead off or, you know, does it, is it one of those things? Like, are they going to have to just drop some stuff and it oh, will they're definitely going to have to drop some stuff. Yeah. But the thing right. is, it's like, how do you, you know, will they have to drop it in a way where it just, it does feel out of place um, in the movie to just kind of have some of these points just not brought up again like I said, it's a very tough position to be yeah, in. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's been hours and hours of staff meetings where they try and figure out how to end her story in episode eight and like give the character a proper send off while still working in what they already had planned. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's interesting to see where this goes. Definitely. Yeah. This. I mean, it, I think it is one of those things. Like we talk about it a lot. But she, like I said, she was such an important part. Did you, any of you guys check out that uh, tribute video they yeah. showed? It was a really yeah. great video. And it showed just, I think it showed a great, it, you know, it was a great way to show just what she meant to a, lo- a lot of people. And not just the character of Princess Leia, but also Carrie Fisher. There's a lot of stuff for her just yeah. just being herself. It's great. Well, stuff. what I love about Carrie Fisher is, um, you know, she was only 19 when she was cast as Princess Leia. Mm-hmm. And to be brought into Hollywood at such a young age, she never, you know, went into like a prima donna type of person. She always had this, she always felt really grounded. She always had this really sarcastic streak about her. Like any interview you watch, she knew exactly she had been given this great opportunity and not to waste it and just to, you know, try to bring joy to the people around her. Yeah. So, I mean, I've always loved that about her. Yeah. She's never, she's never been once been as grumpy as some of her other (laughs) co-stars. Like good pal Harrison Ford never crashed a plane uh, into someone either. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's like I said, she's she's great. Um, that video, if no one's seen it, should check it out because game. I don't know, just give me some good feels, guys. But uh, good feels. We'll, we'll get back to Star Wars later. Uh, Sean, you got any any uh, news for me today? You know what you need, Snoop. I need a lot, but... <laughs> you need an animated Watchmen movie. An animated Watchmen movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't they have that? R-rated at that. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I mean, that's a lot of animated blue penis for me to take in, guys. <laughs> You're gonna have to take in all that blue penis, Snoop. 
<laughs> yeah, what's the deal behind that? I mean, we so, have I mean, the this, movie. Okay, we, we should say this hasn't been confirmed. Um, apparently, this comes from a marketing survey where they were, you know, seeking it out, you know, if people are interested in this. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to act like this is definitely going to happen. It may or may not. But, you know, how would you guys feel about an animated Watchmen movie? I personally love the Watchmen. Yeah. And I would love to see more. I, I, I did never, I never saw the, uh, what was the animated? The Tales of the Black Freighter. Yeah, I never did see that. Was that good? It was choppy. You can tell they put it together to be like, hey, buy this extra edition for a little bit more money. Hmm. But, yeah, I don't, I don't need this. Um, it could definitely be interesting i guess if they get some of the same people because you know they go back and make some of these comics like you have the dark knight returns and a uh, batman year one and they're basically just direct adaptations like page to screen i guess that could be interesting but at the same time that's more or less what the Zack snyder version was in life action just directly taken from the source material it's almost beat for beat the same as the comics so yeah i don't i'll check it out if they make it definitely but i don't need it yeah, I think that's one of those cases where, like you said, like, who is this for? I mean, I know, like, even just like with the the other DC anime and stuff that they do right now, it is for very specific groups, of, and there are people who will want it and will buy it. But the thing is, I mean, no one's really been asking for any more Watchmen stuff since that movie came out, because that movie is, like, if you wanted a Watchmen movie, like you got it, that, like that is the definitive yeah. Watchmen movie. That's when Zack Snyder was good at making DC movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dylan, 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 <laughs> Dylan. We have been nothing but fans of DC properties <laughs> on this podcast. How dare you throw that wrench into our long track record of nothing but praise? I'll throw a wrench. Just <laughs> throw a wrench. <laughs> oh, I caught it. It's all slimy and greasy. Take it back. Oof. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know what it could be? Maybe it's a bit of a stretch, but, uh, in the comics they're doing that, you know, they j- just rebooted DC again and yeah. the, you know, mystery behind the, uh, reboot in the comics is because of like Dr. Manhattan and the other Watchmen characters. You think that that may- might be why, like uh... they're trying, you know, like maybe they m- might want to eventually use some of those stories um in their animated movies and tie in the Watchmen universe that way maybe it, i mean it remains to be seen how they end up resolving that plot line um yeah it's still going on they're dragging it out <laughs> yeah they they have a long habit of uh especially with these recent movies of like they'll take a character and the movie will be about that character but at the same time they'll they'll either shove the justice league or batman in front of it like you have Justice League versus Teen Titans, or you have Justice League Dark with ba- also starring Batman. So, yeah, I want to put it past him. Hmm. I don't know. It's like I said, it, I, I mean, I'm more interested to see what, if there is something like else behind that, behind it that they're planning than this actual movie. Like, if this movie gets made, I'll watch it, I'm sure, but I'm not asking for it. So, you know what I would be interested in? A few years ago, there was talk about HBO making a Watchmen miniseries. Mm. And, yeah, like a 12-episode miniseries, like each episode would be based off of one issue of the comic. I'd be down for that. Yeah. It'd be a good place for it, too. They yeah. have no problem with uh, with any kind of penis in their shows. Wow. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll see it's, it in full swing. Is, this podcast has really gone off track, guys. <laughs> like, Like, we were... Like yeah, we we planned like twenty minutes of penis talk, but this is this is getting out of hand. <laughs> we didn't even we didn't even properly set it up for uh, for a segment. <laughs> I hate when uh, it gets out of hand. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Compose yourself. Snoop, uh, we're, we're serious. I'm we're sorry. serious critics here. There's just so much more. There's so many more elements in this episode than I'm used to. <laughs> there's guests. There's watchmen. There's penises. There's guests with penises. It's, it's all over the place. I think they all match up at some point <laughs> in some way. 
Uh, but I've got more news if we can uh, just put my problems on hold. Um, I know you guys have been wondering, hey, who's going to play Cable? Well, it turns out that Josh Brolin's just going to play every villain that uh, Marvel can come up with. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, now he's Thanos and Cable. Well, I guess Cable's not a villain, but any character in Marvel, I guess, that Josh Brolin wants. That's interesting. <laughs> I Well, you know, um, I wonder how far, because you know they're going to poke jokes at it in Deadpool about him playing two different yeah. Marvel characters. I wonder how far they can actually get away with uh, poking fun at him playing Thanos. I think they can go as far as they want. It can be, you know, it's one of those things that, It'll just be countered as parody if yeah. if you and plus Marvel doesn't seem like the kind of people who would really, you know, care. Of, you know, it's just like obviously yeah, like Disney. Disney has a long track record of uh, not caring what other people do with their characters. <laughs> I know, but uh, it's not like I like it's not like I imagine like Josh Brolin to show up dressed up as Thanos. You know, they'll probably just make <laughs> jokes. Now like, that you say that, I could see them actually doing that in the movie. <laughs> you you think so? I mean, yeah. it's, anything's possible with, you know, with Deadpool and everything. But like I said, I, I it, it is weird that. And I'm sure know, he got permission from uh, Marvel before he did this. Like, <laughs> yeah. they, they loosened his uh, or they unlocked his trailer door on yeah. the Avengers and then War set. And they're like, just be back before before uh, dinner time. He just hop, walks over. But yeah, Dylan, how do you feel about that? Um, I was kind of hoping for Brad Pitt. He seemed like he was like a wild card. I, I like when like I liked him in, in Glorious Bastards. Like he was he was pretty funny. He had it like he had his he has his own kind of dry humor that I thought would have been pretty cool to see beside yeah. Ryan Reynolds. But I mean, I'm fine with it. I mean, Josh Brolin's a good actor. Oh, yeah, he's great. Yeah, it is funny you say that, though, because I thought it was actually going to be Brad Pitt as well because of that uh, the concept art that leaked of Cable, and it looked exactly like Brad Pitt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and and they even took that, con- like, when that concept art was leaked, they even took it down, like Fox took it down, so that made me go like, oh, well, I guess they definitely want Brad Pitt. But So, um, speaking of Cable, how far do you think they're going to go with his uh, his backstory? Like the whole time travel stuff and everything. You think they're going to really delve into it? Yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't. I mean, it's already Deadpool. Deadpool, its universe is obviously still pretty fresh. Um, but the, I think it with that character, it, there's not a lot of like stuff you have to explain or, you know, don't have to worry about taking it too far. Um, because ultimately... Like, whatever they do, Deadpool's just going to make a joke about it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the more ridiculous, the, the better for this particular uh, story and universe that he's going to be in. Um, I, said, I I know, you know, I know the character of Cable and who he is and where he came from. Um, but yeah. I am very excited to see him uh, in live yeah, action. Na- yeah, Nathan Summers, he's... Um He's the descendant of Gene Gray and Scott Summers, and he comes from the future where he's a mutant who's been infected with what's known as the techno virus, techno organic virus, that basically slowly turns his uh, body into a machine. And his mutant powers is he's a really strong tel- uh, he has telekinesis, but he has to use his like powers to like constantly hold the virus at bay. So he mostly just like focuses on you know shooting people and. You know, what machine yeah, parts yeah. he does have, he can use to fight with. Yeah, and that's why, like, his eye is constantly glowing or whatever. Yeah, I mean, he's an interesting character. Um, and I'm interested, uh, like, between him and uh, Domino, who's going to be played by uh, Zazie Beats. Yeah. Um, her her powers are interesting as well. She has, like, doesn't she have a manipula- manipulation of her probability? Yeah, she, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Basically, how it's usually described is... Um, she can alter the uh, the events of probability. So In let's say she has, yeah. So let's say she has a gun that can shoot two hundred feet at one hundred ninety nine feet. She can usually get the shot like ten out of ten times. But if it's two hundred and one feet away, she can't shoot it because at that point it's impossible. But if it's technically <laughs> possible, she can usually do it. Huh. Okay. It's probably 
really good at uh at some gambling. Probably just cleans up those those casinos. Yeah. But yeah, I, I this is a movie that I'm not like I'm excited to see. Um but I am more excited to see those characters than Deadpool. <laughs> like I love I, I loved the movie Deadpool. I thought it was great. Um but just like he is in the comics, after a while he can get on your nerves. <laughs> yeah. So but yeah, I think like I said, I'm not worried about it. So uh I mean we still got some some time. Is there any more news we should cover, guys? Is Dylan a, Dylan's just over there looking at all his notes, I'm sure. Mm. <laughs> Just wondering what to talk about. Uh, Looking at my hands. Wow. <laughs> Shouldn't two of them. <laughs> Shamik Moore has uh he's gonna voice Miles Morales in the animated Spider Man movie. Yeah, he's the he he was the main character in uh in Dope, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, that's really great. Um I'm ex I'm excited to see that movie. Um I know it's animated, but I feel like they're taking it uh seriously. Um, something that Sony never usually does um, when it comes to these kind of properties. But I think that comes out next year, I believe, right? 2018? This like sometime uh, in December? Yeah, twenty eight, December 21st, 2018. Yeah, it is one of, like, I think they're going about it the right way, like, as far as making it animated, because then people won't necessarily it, get confused as far as, like, uh, why are there two... Two Spider Men. Yeah. Because I'm sure they'll go the like the full nine yards with this and in you know, Miles origin story, he takes on the role of Spider Man after Peter Parker is killed. So I imagine they'll do all of that in his particular story. And I'd like to I'd like to see this uh uh see that, um, you know, kinda like obviously I don't want to see Peter Parker dead. Love that guy, but I think Miles' story does work better that way because he does kind of he is just kind of inspired to take on this new role but doesn't really know how to do it um and doesn't necessarily have anyone to really teach him but he is similar to peter parker in a lot of ways whereas he more or less just he does want to do the right thing and also have a normal life you know just hang out hang out at school but yeah i'd like to is he is he a kid is a bit old though so i don't know why like i don't know how he'll come across playing a like a ten year old boy, but sure, go for it. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. As I said, uh, as Sean, as I told Sean before, Dylan, I I don't trust anything that Sony does with uh, Spider Man these days. Oh no, I bet I bet the first ten minutes of Spider Man Homecoming is just gonna be the Sony logo. <laughs> <laughs> like they're gonna they're gonna burn it into you that they make sure that you know this is Sony. <laughs> they probably got a they probably got another or like two two opening uh crawls ready though like after reviews come out they want to see like if people like it then yeah they'll do that but if not they'll just switch it out for the disney logo and be like yeah they made this not us sorry <laughs> i know, I I know they're gonna do something to make me mad <laughs> they always do I'm, I'm I am looking forward to it. There's a lot of good Marvel movies coming out this year, and some DC movies that might be good. We don't know. I did remember something. Uh, they're bringing back Invader Zim for a TV movie. <laughs> oh yeah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> they're bringing back everything. Hey, yeah, like they're really stretching the now, aren't they? I mean, I loved Invader Zim, but. Uh, like who decide? Like who found? Like who found? I guess I guess they found a script or something, and they're like, "Yeah, we can go ahead and make this." But yeah, they're starting to they're starting to bring back a lot of like these old Nick shows as well. Um, yeah, at the I end think, of the year, we're getting a Hey Arnold movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think they've talked about like a like another big Nick Tunes uh, thing, like event. Um, maybe this was it. I I don't know. Like I said, I like these. You know, I, I like these properties. I grew up with them, but... Oh, yeah. But they never really had endings. You know, you never really had any closure. And I think that's what's wrong with a lot of millennials these days is <laughs> they never got closure to this thing, so it affects them in their everyday life. They're doing drugs. They're, uh, <laughs> they're, so they're robbing banks. They're like, where? <laughs> what happened to Hey Arnold? <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever find his, his parents? Yeah. Like, we thought Pokemon Go was going to fix the problem. No. <laughs> um, 
Hey, Snoop. Yeah, what's Snoop. up? Snoop. 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 Did you John. see those set photos for the Punisher? I did see him. John John uh, Barenthal is very upset, and I'm loving every <laughs> bit of it. His shirt's yep. too tight. He's like, can I get out of this? He's like, no. <laughs> I peeked at him, too. <laughs> I didn't want him to know I was looking, but I was looking. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it looks good, though. Yeah, it looks really great. Uh, I don't, you know, they're just set photos, so we have, still have no idea what's going on, but... I mean, I think John Barenthal was one of the best parts of season two of Daredevil. Definitely. And, like, my biggest complaint is that they kind of pushed him in the background for kind of the middle half of the season because I just wanted more Punisher stuff. And well, we had to watch Karen Page walk into an office and become a journalist, so we had to we had to put him on hold. Yeah, they really <laughs> they, they pushed her. Uh that bothered me. Like, I love the character of Kara Page, but at the time that was really bothering me because there was another particular blonde, uh, ind- strong, independent blonde character from another show that I couldn't stand. Felicity Smoke. Ugh. But, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Next week, next week we'll talk about Felicity. Oh, yeah, we will. I'm going to have to catch up on that. But yeah, uh, that one, Sean, do you know when The Punisher is set to premiere? November, I think. I mean, I think they just said end of the year, but I'm going to assume November-ish. That's usually when the Marvel stuff comes out on Netflix. Yeah, I'm ready to see a trailer for that as well because that is an instance of they weren't really planning on doing it until they got, like, the, you know, outcry of fans who love the Punisher, and they are like, fine, you could have them. So that makes me think, like, how much was put into this show? Because I don't want this to be another you know, Iron Fist uh, instance where it just didn't really... Wait, the story so, wasn't developed and... Hmm. Speaking of which, Dylan, you just finished Iron Fist, didn't you? I did finish it. Thoughts real quick. Um, It was... It wasn't what I expected, but to be fair, I've never really read that much into Iron Fist. I just kind of went into it knowing, okay, he has a fist that can apparently... is indestructible and he can punch through anything or whatever and um but yeah it was definitely uh choppy (laughs) and a lot of the characters were like the meachums they were they were awful like we could have did completely without them at all like just get rid of the whole meachum storyline altogether oh but what about david winham and his (laughs) winhamness What about look, it? <laughs> look, just have just have David, just have David Wenham walking around with an ice cream s- scooper. That's that's his weapon. That's his weapon, and that's the main villain for the series. I would like to. I would like a spinoff show of him just walking around, uh, getting yelled at by hot dog vendors. Though, <laughs> <laughs> why was that hot dog vendor so mean to him? <laughs> it's kind of funny though, because like Danny Rand's so like up and down with his like emotions like he'll just be super super pissed and like just want to murder and then he'll be like calm and serene and you just i think like you said on the show he was very childlike in his decision making he like went off straight emotions and he's supposed to be this really composed you know monk-like guy who's you know imbued with the power of the iron fist but he's not (laughs) <laughs> and it just took me back to uh, the uh, first San Diego Comic-Con uh, Defenders teaser trailer where it shows, like, um, you know, it kind of goes, like, Daredevil. And then, you know, you see, like, a camera for Jessica Jones and, like, some bullet holes for Luke Cage. And then it just, a piece of paper that says, who's Danny Rand? <laughs> like, I guess. I'm still they, asking that. <laughs> Who is like, Danny Rand? I, that's... That was, like, leading into Defenders, like, we still don't know who he is because they didn't do a very good job of really letting us know, like, well, what's, what's, what's motivating this guy? His emotions? That's it. That, and he gets really upset with uh, kids' poor uh, taekwondo forms. <laughs> Your punches are like means. lace curtains or Your whatever. Your punches are like said. lace curtains. Like, <laughs> who the hell is, like, I... <laughs> If I was in that dojo, I'd be like, who is this guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm excited to see more of them in 
uh, different hands. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm excited to see more of them with, like, better riders. I'm also waiting for someone to point out that he should wear something besides a hoodie. Like, just one of the characters be like, everyone knows who you are. He's a billionaire. Shouldn't he be concerned? <laughs> Ugh. Mm. I don't know. Still excited for it, though. I'll never watch that show again, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, um... Uh, oh, you know, got a little bit more of casting news, actually. Um, Shung and Dylan, uh, you know that, that Harry Potter thing that came out uh, last year? Fantastic Beast. And where would you find them? And where to find them, Snoop? Oh, sorry. I mean, wow. I didn't know. <laughs> as long as they're found, that's what's important, Dylan. But yeah, they just found their uh, new young Dumbledore in uh, Jude Law. That was interesting. Yeah, I think that's the perfect match for Johnny Depp. Yeah, those two facing off will be pretty pretty good. I really liked Colin Farrell uh, in that role. Um, but of course, you know, spoiler, he ends up being mm-hmm. Johnny Depp's character. Oh, but wow. what yeah, a twist. He, <laughs> what a twist. But yeah, I think Jude Law will make a good younger uh, Dumbledore. Wait, so... The Colin, like Colin Farrell in the movie, is just secretly Johnny Depp's character of Grindelwald the whole time. Yeah, surprise. Why not? Why not? Why not just keep him as Colin Farrell? Like, why not? What? <laughs> because Colin Farrell is undercover in the yeah, but- um, American Wizard world as like a. Uh, He's like a law enforcer, basically, for wizards in America. And I guess it doesn't really... Well, his mission is to find, like, this um, special child who has, like, this great power. And I won't go too into it, but um, he finds it. And then at the end of the movie, you know, Newt, the main character played by um, Eddie Redmayne. From Aliens. Like, She's back. What? Got her out of cryo sleep. <laughs> And um, reveals that he is this movie's Voldemort, basically. Uh. So we'll see where it goes. I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I I haven't watched that. The thing is about when the movie was announced and there were like five announced after, I didn't necessarily care. Like, I love the Harry Potter franchise. I grew up on it. Um, It's just it doesn't. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean as much to me as other people to have it brought, have the world brought back. Um, like it's, it's just, it's not like, you know, Star Wars means that much to me. Obviously at one point I was excited about Lord of the Rings stuff coming back and then I got the Hobbit. So not so much anymore, but as I said, I'm, it, it's one of those things that I'll get around to. Um, I'm sure, but I don't, I, I didn't really care. But now that uh, they have announced, uh, you know, this Dumbledore casting, I am really excited to see uh, the two of them kind of face off because that was one of the that was one of the, the uh, best parts that just kind of got mentioned in the background uh, in the original books is uh, how Dumbledore and Grindelwald um, fought. So I, I would definitely, especially with them kind of having... You know, they have the relationship they apparently had. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited. I, I I don't necessarily want Johnny Depp to be Grindelwald. It's just, he, he needs to stop being in things. <laughs> yeah, just, he's kind of poor guy. I hate it because he's so awesome, but he's just... He, he cracked. <laughs> he did. I don't know what... Yeah, it's it's whatever. I it's mean, like somewhere uh, I around... Was, uh, Tim Burton used and abused him. Somewhere around um, Lone Ranger. <laughs> he couldn't bounce back like Army Hammer. Uh, he just, he went too deep in the character. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll keep up with this, uh, this series, I'm sure. Um, and I want to see that war between Dumbledore and uh, Grindelwald, who's basically gay wizard Hitler. So I'm all for that. So, uh... Dolph Lundgren is going to be King Neris in Aquaman. Is that who they said he's going to be? I know yeah. he got cast. I just didn't actually bother to research. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, King Neris is um, he's the leader. He's the leader of Zebel, which is kind of like a like a city that kind of like a warring city to Atlantis. And he's usually like trying to go after Aquaman's wife, Mira. So that's what that guy's all about. I don't blame him. He's seen <laughs> his wife. She looks great. But, uh, huh. Yeah. You think, uh, well, no, then never mind. I was going to say you think he might appear in Justice League, but that's way too late. They're already in post for that movie. He might be mentioned in Justice League. Because it, I wonder how much will set up some of these other movies in Justice League. Um, or if they'll just, after, you know, they defeat the Parademons and Darkseid or whatever, they'll just, you know, It'll be like at the end of Avengers, and they'll all just kind of walk away in their Ferraris, and you know he'll drive back to Atlantis, and we'll see what's been happening while he's gone. I'm excited to see Black Man in in the Aquaman movie. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah, um, Aquaman's probably besides Wonder Woman, one of the the DC movies I'm most excited about in their current slate. I'll keep up with that. Um, I'm ready for. A tra- I feel like a trailer should come out for that soon at some point because it's said to come out next year, yeah. and we haven't. We 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 heard about it for you know a bit of a, a bit of a, a stint, especially when the Flash stuff, all that, you know, everyone dropped out of that, and everyone was asking James Wan like, "Are you leaving?" He's like, "No, I'm I'm still here, just just hanging out," because uh, I'd like to see. I, I'm glad he he's committed to this. I don't want to. I, I want to see his his Aquaman movie. <laughs> Sean, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. So everybody knows we have a tradition here of our pets, uh, their audio leaking into the podcast. Dylan has turtles. I'm, I'm enjoying them right now. They're just <laughs> slamming their shells up against the glass and the rocks, and it's very <laughs> annoying. <laughs> they got excited about it, that Aquaman news. Yeah, They're like, like finally. finally representation for us. Because they are aquatic turtles. <laughs> uh. So yeah, so far so good, guys. I'm liking being a part of this podcast well <laughs> thank you we like having you here dylan look okay I, i'm reaching into the news hole and i don't feel any more news do you guys feel any more news <laughs> in the news hole in the newsy news hole yeah uh i don't think i have much of anything else um it's it's a surprise to me i i'm as prepared as i am uh oh quick note just because this show is very important to me. Uh, Young Justice season three started voice production. So okay, that's good. Have they um, have they confirmed like is that going to be on Netflix or Cartoon Network or it's Netflix? It's Netflix. Netflix picked it up. Okay, um, yeah, which is awesome. Um, yeah, because I wouldn't, I, I would wouldn't trust it to be on Cartoon Network. No. Long well, no, back. you don't have the problem you had because it got canceled on Cartoon Network because. There's no toys. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people watched it. It just wasn't the people that were of the right age to buy toys. You don't have that problem on Netflix. Yeah, exactly. They're just like, we're going to make this show. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm more than ready. Dylan, did you watch any of Young Justice yet? No. <laughs> I'd recommend it. It's pretty good. It's really great. If you want to, like, this is one of those few shows that just gets these characterizations of some of these superheroes. But yeah, it's it's good stuff. I'm glad it finally came back. The internet finally finally helped me out. They're always bringing all kinds of other crap back I don't care about. So when this was announced, I was all on board. Of course, I had to you know sit through two seasons of Fuller House to get it. But <laughs> <laughs> did you watch that second season? I watched the first season, and it was I felt I like I was losing part of my mind. Intelligence, it was just <laughs> so numbing, and. Ugh. I watched the first 10 minutes of Fuller House just to see, like, because my thoughts were when it was announced, I was like, this show can't be like the original because that was like a 90s show. They can't do that. They did that. <laughs> yeah. I did like that part where they, uh, they introduce everybody, like the classic sitcom way of having some, you know, each person come in a door and then like they get a line and it claps. And then someone was like, hey, where's your sister, Michelle? And they were like, oh, well, she can't be here because uh, she has a fashion line to take care of in New York. And then they all look at the camera. 
Yeah, that was pretty just funny. Just calling out Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> they called them out so you, good. You guys are really making me want to watch this show now. I I genuinely laughed at that. You got and six stars went, on Netflix. <laughs> six. They don't even do stars anymore. <laughs> we give it two thumbs up. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm all I'm, I'm ready to see Young Justice again. Dylan, you should definitely check it out. The first two seasons are on Netflix right now, and it's it's great stuff. Um Maybe I will, maybe I won't. (laughs) (laughs) You're you're so spotty about TV. I'm very spotty about TV. It's because it's such a commitment. It is, but I mean, I hope you've been watching something at least for uh, our later segment. But until then, let's say we just get into the meat of the rest of this episode, guys. I don't like, I'm fresh out of newsy news at this point. Okay. So, um,. Yeah, this this week's episode was going to be about live action <laughs> DC shows, and then last night you called me up. I did you went, I, on, yeah. you went <laughs> on this long you, tan- <laughs> you went on this long tangent about how two important trailers dropped, and if we could just talk about that because they and I got really upset, our time. <laughs> and by upset I meant I nodded my head and said okay. So yep. I guess we'll do that instead. <laughs> it's fine it saves us we can do that topic next week which means that's one less thing i have to think about uh coming up with after this episode but yeah two very big trailers uh came out this week one came out right after we did last week's episode <laughs> uh so i guess we talk about that one th- uh first the new uh thor ragnarok trailer came out monday yes looks, yes, looks yes amazing it looks absolutely fantastic, guys. Um, the one thing I noticed straight away is that this, just for this trailer, this movie looks like it's going to have more of a personality and character than either of the previous two uh, Thor movies. Oh yeah, it almost seems like a reboot. Like, a, like it does. It, it's it not like hardly any of the same characters except for basically Thor, uh, Loki, and Odin. You got but, Heimdall and. The Warriors 3, but yeah. They cut out all the Earth nonsense, most of it. Yeah, uh, there, there's no more city city stuff, no more Thor in the city. Uh, he's he's out in space where he belongs. Now, uh, we do know he will be appearing on Earth. I'm assuming probably at the very beginning of the movie. Yeah, he, we, has to, uh, he has to meet Doctor Strange. Yeah, and that's, that's where Odin world. is, is on Earth right now. Do you guys know if... Yeah. If these uh, Team Thor movies are, or these little shorts that they made, are those part of the no, universe? No, they're not canon. <laughs> they're just jokes. Because he seems, because leading up to it, he's he seems pretty funny, like funnier than he's been in the past couple. Yeah, movies. Um, part of that's just Taika Waititi. I think is how you say his name. Has a very interesting sense of humor. And plus, I think something that got overlooked in all these Marvel movies, Chris Hemsworth, he has a really good uh, comedic timing. And they never took advantage of that until now, really. Yeah, and he's been in, I think they've only just now kind of, I don't even know if it's them, more of, uh, like you said, uh, Taika Waititi. Um, he, he he is known, um, he's done Hunt for the Wilder People. And uh, mm. what's that one about vampires he did, John? What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah, what we do in the shadows, which is a uh, basically a mockumentary. Um, so he's known for that, and I he may have been the one to kind of see like, like this guy can be really funny. Um, and that may have been what brought you know drawn him to the project because Chris Hensworth in between uh, the Avengers movies, he's done like he was the receptionist in uh, that latest Ghostbusters film that everyone was a hundred percent on board with. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they said he's actually pretty great in that. Um. He's also been in, like, the Vacation reboot and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, I think that is, a, I think it is, um, people kind of realize that, you know, it's okay for, <laughs> it's okay for Thor to be funny, but I think this was, these jokes are going to be written in the right way, unlike Thor 2, which is nothing but just well, banter and they you just cut off your grandfather's head. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so all the Marvel movies have jokes in them, obviously. But yeah. I think something that, um, especially when you look at Thor the Dark World, then they're just flat out puns. Like, I think something that the Rooster Brothers are good about, like, they have jokes, but the jokes are about, like, who the characters are. Like, you have, um, I can't think of a good example right now, but 
every like you have jokes about uh, Captain America being out of time. You know, he has a list with a bunch of stuff he has to catch up on. Oh yeah, yeah. As a as you know, compared to just doing flat out puns like they did in Thor: The Dark World. Yeah, and I think that like I said I, I, I Thor two is just so forgettable to me <laughs> i don't remember much of about it um and i think i've seen it twice but <laughs> yeah it, even with the jokes in there the jokes the puns and everything in that movie i remember being constant and that just hurts the movie even in, especially in the final fight like yeah it, 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 there's I one moment like, where like he gets on a subway and it's supposed to be a joke it's like well the world's you know about to end on this it, other side exactly. of town like he really breaks the tension yeah, it takes you out of the movie and you don't care because you're like, well, like this obviously isn't a big deal. But yeah, I think this is going to be a, a case of like what you said. Oh, the Russo brothers are great at is, you know, you knowing when to use your uh, your your quips and um, your gags, and you know, making sure they're funny. <laughs> and it just it gives a personality. Like you could tell one thing about Thor two especially is it's very almost generic in um in just what everything looks and uh, how the characters um, are, you know, interacting. or But this movie, this movie feels way different from yeah. the first two movies. You can wow. tell this director has a vision and it's it's coming across. Yeah, start, I mean, starting right off the trailer, it lets you know what kind of movie it's going to be. You have Thor's hammer being broken. Yeah, pretty. that's a big moment. Uh, I don't see, I don't know, I want to ask you guys about that uh, now that you mention it. I, I don't know if I would have shown it being broken. I would have, like, because there's a moment in that trailer where he throws it in um, Hella, played by Kate uh, Blanchett, who looks great. Um, she catches it, and then it, it cuts, you know, fades to black, and then fades back in, and then she breaks it. I would have just left it uh, at her catching it, because that alone is shocking enough. Yeah. So how do you guys... Well, yes. we, if you've been paying attention, you know he loses it. Uh, all the concept art, he's had various weapons, you know, not being his hammer. Uh, you know, they released some concept art for Infinity War where he's standing next to Rocket Raccoon and he has um, his giant axe. So, I mean, oh, yeah. obviously something's happened to it. Yeah, but again, that's just, I don't know. It's, it, that just seems like one of those things. It's like, you didn't have to necessarily show me. So. I was already shocked with her catching it um, because that's no easy thing for anyone to do. Um, I mean, you've even like you've seen a like Hulk has trouble with that hammer. Um, Well, yeah, I mean, you have to be worthy. It has nothing to do with how strong you actually are. Yeah, I know. Um, I know that Sean. Jeez. Wow. But yeah, uh, Dylan. Anything else? Like anything else big stand out for you in that trailer? Oh, definitely. Uh, did you? I mean, one thing I noticed: Hulk's in it, obviously. Um, oh yeah. But uh, you get that good close up of him. He looks a little bit more uh, Mark Ruffalo-y. Mm-hmm. Does you think that guy? <laughs> they're just like flexing their mocap uh, I- skills, or do you think that's going to be part of the story? Like he's him and the Hulk, Bruce Banner and the Hulk are becoming more and more kind of the same oh okay yeah that's an interesting that's that's interesting i didn't even think about it like that because i I mean obviously like the more these movies go on technology gets better and better especially uh mocap so i'm sure that has something to do with that but that would be a i I think that would be a a kind of a good way to to tell uh that particular story because it does seem like that to me anyway that hulk is going to be a big part of this as well like i i wouldn't i hope he finally learned how to talk <laughs> yeah um well may, maybe it's just me but um i think it's kind of obvious that when you get to the part of the trailer with the arena and the hoax coming out especially when especially the moment when hulk is jumping at thor to me it looks like the vfx shots haven't been completely finished yet no yeah you're right i noticed that that was a little off as well um especially in that jumping scene yeah um so yeah it could be any number of things but like like I mean, said, no, I that, definitely agree that uh, they're pressing him more towards looking like Bruce Banner. But, yeah, I, I just like, you know, when you see him running, it looks looks slightly off. And I think, yeah, I mean, that's common yeah. for them to release shots that haven't been completely done in the trailer yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even like, 
Uh, I'm sure that is the case because this is just like the first trailer. But yeah. even then, it like it looks it still looks pretty good. Um, you know, he's got the gladiator armor on as well. Um, yeah. we see we see uh, Jeff Goldblum's character. Yeah, who, the uh, Grandmaster. Yeah, I think that. See, that's. I wonder how much of that of that particular you know part of the story will end up in the movie. Like, I wonder if that's just going to be like, um, you know, like. 20 30 minutes at most and then like hulk and thor are gonna escape i I don't know probably be all of act two my guess yeah yeah i hope it's not the third act (laughs) no well we know he's they gotta go back because there's been a description of the movie we know they've got to go back to fight hella at some point so yeah i guess we see asgard being destroyed that's a pretty big deal as well um and I'm sure that's kind of how he ends up on, uh, you know, his hammer getting broken and um, getting cast out where he eventually gets caught by the Grandmaster. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, is this, like, I mean, I guess he'll just be on Earth after that? for Like, or will Asgard come back? Yeah, mm-hmm. Ragnarok is an event. It's kind of like a rebirth of Asgard in a way. Like, every so often, there's this giant cataclysmic fight for Asgard. And after, it's usually kind of like a new beginning. So, yeah. um, It's interesting, uh, Jeff Goldblum being the Grandmaster. They're continuing this trend of movies that are set in space. They introduce uh, an elder of the universe. Because we had The Collector in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which was another one. Yeah. Um, And... But they haven't have even in Guardians of the Galaxy because he's the first one to be introduced. They haven't even really brought out the concept of the no, but the elders. I mean, they they have their exact same personalities and their little uh, you know the elders. They each have their own thing that they like to do. And like the collector just collects stuff. The Grandmaster he <laughs> plays games. Isn't there one that just runs? Yeah, the runner. <laughs> That's just yeah. it's just his pastime. <laughs> just runs around the universe. He just runs around the galaxy. Just gets some good cardio in. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think, so that makes me wonder, you know, kind of, uh, is that just kind of part of the Thanos storyline, or is they going to be a bigger part of something else? Because, I mean, the Thanos storyline, which is like, I mean, this is this is the big thing that Marvel's been working up to since all this started. I'm sure with it kind of, you know, getting closer and closer, they are thinking starting to think about, hey, where do we go after this? Um, yeah. So that could be, who knows, definitely, that could be an instance. So, hmm. def- definitely at uh, when we've, at the end of uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, Thor is returning to Asgard because he's like, there have been too many Infinity Stones popping up in the past couple of years, and he <laughs> needs to go in investigate. That, I saw it in that mystical bathtub. <laughs> <Yeah>. Too many. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, you think the uh, you think this is going to be the movie where we get the Soul Stone, the final Infinity Gem, or do you think that's gonna uh, you think they're gonna save that for Infinity War? Hmm, I don't know. I I still still think they're just gonna hold that one yeah. out for I, uh, the last Avengers or the next Avengers. I mean, you see, I think if they don't do it in Infinity War, I think this would be the movie where it would make most sense to introduce it. Yeah, well. Which so we have Ry- Ragnarok's the one that wraps up this year. Um, what is after that? Oh, the what beginning of 2018, I think. Um, Black Panther. Is it Black Panther? That's. It might me, be. Let me look that up. Wow, Sean! I can't believe you're looking stuff up on the podcast. I've never done that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> While he does that, we do lose Mjolnir, but we get Thor's helmet. <laughs> yeah. We do get Thor's helmet back. It looks pretty good. They finally figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. I mean, we lose his hair, too, but he gets a oh, helmet. Beautiful hair. It is Black Panther, yeah. yeah. Comes out in February. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I, I don't see why Black Panther would have an Infinity Stone in it. Yeah. Um, that'll probably just be... It'll be Black Panther solo uh, movie and it's set up. Yeah, and the only other one to... is maybe Captain Marvel, where they would... But no, I mean that comes after Infinity War, so yeah, she's gonna show up in Avengers yeah. as well. Um, so yeah, I would imagine that, it, like you said, if it doesn't show up in this movie, and I don't really see, I mean, obviously that I don't know the, the whole story, so it might be in there, but I think for the, you know, the reason 
uh, like Thanos is coming is to get those stones. I think they would want to just save that. Like maybe he gets uh, the rest of them like fairly quickly. Um, and then the rest of the movie is them trying to get to this last one before him. Um, and then, yeah, that'd be cool. But we'll, yeah, nice little race. Um, or it may pop but, up an agents of shield season five, <laughs> episode one. <laughs> Maybe it will. <laughs> then you'll have to go back and watch every single episode. Snoop. I will watch that one episode. If that's the case, <laughs> uh, yeah. sure. It's just not for me guys. Um, but yeah, uh, like we get, like Dylan said, we get the helmet. It looks pretty good. Loki has a new helmet as well. Yeah. Everyone's just getting new helmets. Uh, we do, actually we don't see a, we don't see a ton of Loki in the trailer. No, yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I wonder how big of a part he'll play. Well, it's interesting because you, you, you see him during the arena fight. You see him sitting next to uh, the Grandmaster, and he's looking a little bit nervous while he's watching this fight. So yeah, but he's always nervous. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> like. Because he has a little bit of history with the Hulk. If you go back to the Avengers, you know the Hulk threw him around like yes. a ragdoll. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be a funny uh, funny thing to see them two uh, reunite. Yeah. It, so I wonder if he is sitting, you know, he's sitting with the Grandmaster. Obviously, he's not going to be on Thor's side. So I guess maybe, you think maybe he sides with, uh, with Hela? Because we maybe don't really know... Yeah, I'm curious to see if they actually if they make Hela uh, Loki's daughter in this. Oh, yeah. What? I, That'd be crazy. Yeah, Hela is um, she's the daughter of Loki, but like a different incarnation of Loki. It's really convoluted comic nonsense. Weren't they lovers though at some point too? <laughs> Quite possibly. I mean, it's obvious if you look at the trailer. I mean, she she even dresses a little bit like Loki. Like, she almost looks like a female Loki. Yeah, you're right, yeah. But I don't know if they're going to go that route or not. It, I guess it just depends on the story. Like, if it's yeah. important enough, then I'm sure they will. But this Thor movie seems like... Obviously, it is still too early to tell, but this does seem like the movie where we're going to get that... The Thor that, you know, we've always kind of yeah. wanted. Where The same thing that Winter Soldier did with uh, Captain America's character. And I, I hope that's the case. It looks really great. I'm, yeah. I'm the th- I, I like that the Hela, we see, we see both versions of her, like the normal one. Then you have the one with the crazy helmet with the spikes. Yeah, they even did the helmet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are the Valkyrie are going to be in this yeah. as well? Well, you got yeah. Tessa Thompson. Yeah, it's Valkyrie. Yeah. That'll be cool. A cool new element. It's better than Natalie Portman. <laughs> I mean, I, I love Natalie Portman as an actress, but... Not in Thor movies, because you can tell she she just wants that paycheck. I said this to you the other day, Dylan. Uh, Natalie Portman is the female version of James Franco. <laughs> they're, they're both very good actors, but it's really obvious when they're just doing something for a paycheck. Just, just phoning in, yeah. yeah. But, Sean, it doesn't look like we're going to see uh, your favorite actress anymore, uh, the lovely Kat Dennings. <laughs> Sean, is that your favorite actress? I like two aspects of that character. You can take a while to guess which two. Left and right. <laughs> uh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they they clearly, like her and uh, Selvig didn't have much or anything to do in that last movie. It, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I uh, Like, if he's going to Earth, like when he goes to Earth, he just needs to be there to to hang out with Doctor Strange and drink some beer. That's that's all I want to see, and then I want to see him get into space in Asgard. So, speaking of Doctor yeah. Strange, I went back and watched that scene of him and Thor together. Those gloves really stand out. Those yellow gloves, because that's he, he doesn't wear those like at any point in the film up to that point. I would have to watch it again. Wow. Uh, sorry. There's a lot going on, and Sean, there are a lot of Doctor Stranges to keep up with. In that one scene, they're like all around each other, <laughs> they're mi- mirroring each other and stuff. Some pretty good magic at the end, though, right? He just kept yeah, me feeling yeah. his beer. <laughs> I'm excited to possibly see. Uh, is it Sutar? Oh yeah, Sutar. Sutar, the um, the leader of Muscleheim. Yeah, the basically Hell Realm or whatever. That'll be cool to see. 
Because I was interested in that when, like, all the portals were opening in Thor the Dark World, and you could see, like, the lava, and I was like, ooh, what's in there? That was... <laughs> you just squinting real hard? You're like, what's that? Uh, oh, uh, one more character uh, we, we kind of mentioned, but, I mean, he's in there. Uh, Heimdall looks like he's he's doing something. Yeah. He's got his... Uh, <laughs> everyone says he's cosplaying as a... Uh, uh, Bishop from Days of Future Past, which is pretty <laughs> that funny. That is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, it looks like he's gotten uh, exiled as well um, since Asgard's destruction. So I, I, I love it yourself, but I think I wouldn't care about that character at all if it wasn't if he wasn't the one playing him. Um, so I wonder, I wonder if he'll have like kind of his own, uh, his own bigger role um, on the side. Because, I mean, he's he's a fairly important character in the Thor um, movies, I'd say. I mean, he's watching a lot of stuff, but every now and again he whips out that spear. And Thor did have that vision of him as, like, he would play a bigger role, um, talking oh, about yeah. how, in, uh, yeah, in Ultron, how, uh, you know, he sent them all to, uh, to hell, hell, basically. Yeah, yeah. to their death. And, yeah. Which is, um, yeah, which is... I mean, works two ways, you know, just, uh, we're taking you to hell, but, um, Hela is also, you know, that's the realm she controls, is hell, H-E-L. Yeah. Um, you get a, you get a shot of Carl Urban, a scourge, the executioner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. It's, like, there's, there's a lot of, like, yeah. just quick shots they kind of throw in there. Um, I don't know a lot about that Usually character. works with the Enchantress. Oh, uh, uh, Okay. Yeah, it, they're definitely putting a big focus on, um, like, Thor and the Hulk and Hela, obviously. Um, a lot of people are saying, is she going to be uh, the incarnation of uh, Lady Death yeah, for Thanos? Um, possibly. You see, I always thought that for general audiences, that might be a bit too... Not that it's hard to understand, but it's a very vague concept. You know, Thanos loving the entity mm-hmm. of death. So, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if they ended up doing that. I, I wouldn't mind if they just do it how they do it in the comics where she's her own character. But Yeah, yeah, that's because, I mean, that's that's Thanos' character is that obsession and that love of, of death, of the concept of death and everything. But it is one of those things in this in these movies that it's only ever been hinted at one time. And that's the first time we yeah. ever see Thanos like is. I think his like uh, henchman is just like they can tr- or they've taken down all the ch- uh, Chitari and uh, they can combat anything, even possibly death. And then he just turns around and gives that smile. Yeah, he's like um, courting humans is like or char- to, to challenge the humans would be like to court death. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, and then the, yeah. and then that's it. Um, but past that, I mean, we've seen him obviously. But really, it's just been him sitting in chairs and grabbing that gauntlet. So, I don't know. I think I, I think it would be kind of a... If they are going to go that way, maybe just go ahead and start out, uh, you know, start introducing more about the character of Thanos to the, you know, to Thor. So he can, you know, kind of... So he knows at least what's going on. Um, and also this, this concept of death in this movie. And not just kind of maybe cram it all in uh, the next Avengers film. Yeah, because I mean, there's already this Avengers film is going to be huge. Like it's going to be on a scale like none of the other Marvel movies and like really no other movie before it. Just the cast alone. That's like everyone is in this film. What are you saying about this movie exactly? (laughs) Is it going to be big (laughs) or is it going to be big? (laughs) Or is it going to be huge? It's pretty huge. (laughs) Uh, It's going to be huge. uh, yeah, but I don't know. As I said, I think this. I, I think this is one of the I, I, Spider Man's my favorite hero. So obviously, I'm excited for Homecoming, um, and the Guardians are coming back this year, which is great. But I would say that Thor is going to be like this is the Marvel movie. Yeah. This is not just Marvel. This is one of the most anticipated movies of the year for me after seeing the trailer. Wow, wow, Sean. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's a saying a lot statement. for Sean. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't get excited about anything, Dylan. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's pretty big. Uh, but yeah, um, <coughs> I'm definitely going to keep up. I, th- I'm going to keep up with this movie as more stuff comes out. I will just not to spoil. I hope they don't spoil anything. There wasn't, uh, you get a sense of kind of what the story is from this trailer, but I, it's not like, Oh, I've seen the whole movie. So I hope that it stays that way after the next trailer. And then that'll probably be the last trailer I watch. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see anything more into, okay, this is kind of where we're at. This is kind of what happens. And yeah. I don't, I don't want to know the nitty gritty, like, core MCU plot that they've added to this movie. Like, leave that stuff out and uh, save the surprises. We forgot to mention Led Zeppelin's The Immigrant Song is playing over this perfect choice. <laughs> perfect choice. <laughs> That's just the that's the trailer thing now. Uh, since Guardians of the Galaxy, it's just you find a a, a good good uh, pop song or whatever from uh, the eighties uh. or seventies or eighties, and just play it. The famous <laughs> the famous pop song, immigrant song. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's on now uh, one, I think the very first now. That's what I call music <laughs> CD. Yeah. We didn't get to see uh, yeah. the Warriors 3 or Sif, though, or Odin. I mean, we obviously know that Odin will probably appear because Thor's looking for him, but we don't see the Warriors 3 or Sif. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure they'll be in there. Maybe they'll have all the same cast members because that, that, that one guy, they changed oh, up yeah. uh, in Thor 2, and I didn't even realize it until yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I'm sure we'll see him. But like I said, if they play a pretty big part, don't show me until I get in the theater. But yeah, huge trailer for the week. Glad I watched it. But arguably, Sean, more so for me and Dylan, there was an even bigger trailer that came out not too long ago. More of a tease. <laughs> Teased me good, though. Uh, no, that's uh, that's Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi trailer finally came out. And oh my god. Oh, wow. Big stuff. That, whew. I mean, <laughs> well, let's just let's just get into it, boys. What a trailer! First off, I'm just so excited for this movie. I wish it was still coming out in May. It's interesting that this fact, the fact that this movie will uh, pick up probably literally seconds right when the last The Force Awakens ends. Yeah. And that's never been done in a Star, Star Wars, Wars movie before. before. It's a time jump between each movies. Whether it's like a couple of years, but still, yeah. So that'll be something. Yeah, I imagine uh, a lot of people are saying. Also, I'd like to point out uh, that who's ever making these trailers, like they're doing a great job. I like just with the last Force Awakens stuff. I had no idea what was going on. I really don't have an idea of what's going on here. But I noticed they really enjoy uh, throwing in that jump scare at the start of the trailer. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> in the first one you had Finn pop up out of nowhere in the desert and then this one it has her hand just like slammed down on that rock that one gave me a, it jumped out of my seat a little bit <laughs> uh, so they're having fun with it um, but yeah like I, I think that a lot of people are saying that shot will will be like the beginning of the movie it would just start right there or it could even just start from that like that same helicopter shot yeah. that the last one left off of which is I mean like you said, it hasn't been done before in any of the other the prior movies. But I, you know, whatever. It's just let's get right back into it. I don't. It's one of those things that I don't necessarily want to, you know, wonder like, hey, what happened in between here? I'd like to see like, yeah, you know, what's going on. I don't want to have to read a book to find out like <laughs> what's going on. Gross. That that may or may not be uh, taken out of canon, and <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Ugh. Like. But uh, yeah, it looks it looks amazing, and it's very reminiscent of the last Force Awakens trailers. There's a lot of shots that are very similar. Like I said, you got the the jump scare in the beginning. You got uh, Luke's voiceover is a huge part. Luke's gonna be a huge part of this movie as well, which I'd like to get into. Uh, but even just like the ships that are seen in this trailer are very similar to the X wing shot from the from the Force Awakens trailers. I think they do want to kind of keep that. I think they know like. It, like it just it, it gets people excited just to see like that's what's so great about Star Wars is like you can get just hyped over just seeing some ships just flying across like a, you know yeah. some land like they definitely use the same formula like they had to have known they did that yeah um 
and it works because what helps obviously one thing that annoys me about trailers more than anything is just giving away the plot or giving away very important um you know set pieces or action beats or whatever what's great about star wars is that you know people are going to go see it so you can use as little as possible and still get people oh, yeah. excited for it but i think a big difference between obviously uh this movie from what we just saw and the force awakens is luke skywalker he's coming back in a huge way like and we still know nothing about him except he only knows one truth and that's that the jedi should end yeah that's interesting yeah i think you know what i i think this trailer is a lot of misdirection i think because it's very it, it, that line is like you know, the last line of the trailer and you're like, Oh shit. Like, you know, some people are like, is he on the dark side? I don't think he is. Or is it just, he's, you know, the stuff with the Jedi temple, he, he built that, uh, Ben Solo destroyed and, you know, all the Padawan were killed. You know, did that break him where he just doesn't care anymore? I think that's what they want us to think. Um, but I believe they're going to go more for this, this concept of something that's even better than the Jedi and the Sith, like a true balance, which they kind of make, they, they make note of in, exactly. in some of those lines. And, but I mean, if you listen really quietly, like turn, if you like mess with the audio, when he, after he says the Jedi should end, he whispers celibacy. <laughs> <laughs> but that has not been confirmed. <laughs> I mean, it's almost certain. <laughs> Where's that graphic novel? <laughs> what led him to that that way of thinking? Uh, but it's funny you should mention uh, the audio. I've gone back and watched this trailer countless times, as I'm sure everyone else has, and it's already come out that the scenes where uh, you know Ray kind of has this vision is what this trailer's about, and Luke is you know uh, teaching her and asking her, "Hey, like, you know, what do you see?" Um, she's she talks about the light, the darkness, and the balance. If you go back and listen to those specific uh, spots, you can hear quotes from previous characters. It's very low. Like I, I think when she says the light, you hear Carrie Fisher saying, you know, you're my only hope or help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, when she talks about the darkness, you hear Alec Guinness say, seduced by the dark side. And then in the balance, Yoda also says, I think it's Yoda that says... Uh, talks about light and dark and that can mean uh, it like i said it, that can mean a number of things a lot of a, a good bit of those quotes have to do with the character either is said directly by obi-wan or it's even referred um to obi-wan which kind of plays into the theory uh going around that she's related she's a kenobi so that could be you know something huge obviously um or it could just be you know this theme of like finding something in the middle, finding this gray area, which, uh, Dylan, you watch, have you been watching uh, star Wars rebels? Um, not like I should be, but <laughs> if I, if you, if you're going to talk about what I think you're going to talk about, would that be the great Jedi? Yes, exactly. Uh, so yeah, I don't, you know, I keep up with it here and there, but, um, yeah, right now in star Wars rebels in this, uh, current season, they've been exploring this concept of a gray Jedi who, uh, there's a race called the Bindu, I believe. Um, oh, is it like that giant ox looking dude? Yeah, so it's like these okay. weird beasts who uh, kind of like have like, like you said, it looks like an ox, but it, they have like tree like antlers, and they're teaching some of the main characters about, uh, you know, how they use, you know, how the Jedi just focus on light and the Sith just focus on darkness. And then they're like, we use the, you know, the middle ground and we find the balance. And there's even that scene um, that it's like the in the trailer those books that uh we you know we kind of get a close-up at yeah it's surrounded by this weird structure that that it's it's a tree and it looks very similar to the antlers that those characters have and we've already we've already seen that they're not you know shy about using some stuff from that show um in the bigger movies and even in uh rogue one last year one of like that ship oh that, yeah the ghost uh, yeah, the ghost, the main ship that uh, the characters and rebels use, that was part of the run on the to get the Death Star plans or involved with it. So, like I said, it, it, that's what a lot of people are saying right now, and that's I, that's what I, I really want to see this this aspect of kind of like this, you know, Luke sees that like 
he tried it their way and it didn't necessarily work. So maybe he is trying to find this this balance and then he sees that Ray can maybe do what he failed to do. I don't know. Sean, you've been real quiet over there. I'd like to hear some of your Star Wars thoughts because you're not as attached to this franchise as we are, but did you enjoy that trailer? Yeah, it's interesting. You know what I noticed while watching this trailer? What's that? There's a lot of characters running really quickly and then a lot of <laughs> characters walking really slowly the opposite direction. That's a good observation. <laughs> that is. She, she is doing some running, though. Uh, it, I, there, like it's, there's a lot of misdirection in this trailer. Yeah. Um, it looks like we're going to get more of the flashback of the destruction of the Jedi Temple as well. But they also, right after that scene of kind of seeing Luke watching the, the temple burn, it cuts to uh, everyone's favorite trooper, Captain Phasma, <laughs> uh, walking out of some flames. I think those are two different scenes. I am glad that Captain Phasma made it out of that trash compactor, though. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> is she going to do something this movie? They swore that she was going to be an actual character. I felt bad for uh, Gwendolyn Christine uh, getting the shaft on that that last movie. (laughs) I want to see Captain Vasba do some cool stuff. I don't want her to be the next Boba Fett (laughs) where she just looks really awesome and doesn't do anything. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, I think, uh, like I said, this is a trailer where I don't know a lot about it because they are... There's, it seems like there's a lot of misdirect and they don't really give too much away. I hope they keep that. I, I, the people who have made these trailers are, I assume, the same people who made the Force Awakens trailers. So, uh, you know, I hope they keep that that theme. But my my take on it is basically that this movie is going to be about training Rey and seeing also what happened or what really happened all those years ago with Kylo Ren, who we get a glimpse of as well. You guys excited to see him again? Yes. I'm glad he has the same cross guard lightsaber because if that was, I I spent some money on my replica one. I'm glad it's going to still be relevant for at least another year. (laughs) So I guess, uh, I guess John Boyega's character is still in a coma. I think he'll come out of that. I'd like to think that there's just going to be a lot of scenes of, uh, Poe Dameron wheeling them around from place Good. to place. <laughs> um, to go back to uh, the whole gray Jedi thing, I think I think it's uh, it's I don't know if it's official. can well, I guess it is if it was in the Clone Wars um, animated series. But Qui Gon was mm-hmm. kind of like the very first. Well, he wasn't the first gray Jedi, but he was somewhat of a gray Jedi. And he is the first uh, Jedi to be able to bring back his consciousness. Not he couldn't he couldn't come back as a full Force ghost, but he could, you know, speak to Yoda. And in that animated show, he trained Yoda to be able to do this. And then at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Yoda tells Obi Wan that you know he has some training for him in his exile on Tatooine from Qui Gon, and then. Obi-Wan learns it, and that's why I assume you can see them as Force ghosts at the end of Return of the Jedi, and why Hayden Christensen's Anakin's there is, I guess he just automatically gets it because he's the chosen one, but... (laughs) He did a lot of bad things, but it's like, yeah, you can go to Force Ghost Heaven, sure. let you hang out, (laughs) but I feel like they may send Luke down that path since it did start with Qui-Gon, then to Obi-Wan, and then to Yoda, or Qui-Gon to Yoda, to Obi-Wan, to Anakin, kind of to Luke, and then maybe Luke will try to pass that on to Rey to bring balance to the Force. But that's just what I got. Yeah. Hmm. That's Yeah, it is interesting. I don't, because that is more, the Force Ghost thing especially is more of a, it's a prequel thing. Like, obviously it was in the older movies, but it was never really explained until the prequels. And I, I, I am interested to see like how much of that will be brought into this new trilogy. Cause I know, you know, obviously like it, it's still part of the universe that George Lucas started, but they are trying to distance themselves. It seems from anything they, they can is relating to the prequel stuff. Um, and also, midichlorians. It, like I said, <laughs> no more midichlorians. Please. <laughs> they threw them in. They threw them in the trash. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> but yeah, it, it seems like Luke is gonna. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how far they're gonna have Luke's character. 
obviously he's been affected by the stuff with the Jedi Temple, and he has gone. He's been away for a really long time, and he's been at this temple, you know, training under you know whatever he could find uh, from the first Jedi. So I, I don't know how much of that stuff he'll kind of carry over into Ray's teachings. It doesn't even. He seems almost like just the small bit we see of him. We don't even know if he's even still connected to the Force as far as like. You know, we he doesn't use it or anything in any of these trailers. He's more or less just kind of he's the Yoda figure, just kind of standing back and you know telling her you know what to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he's gonna be a uh, like a reluctant teacher. Yeah, Mark Hamill really just he really drove this trailer home. I mean, he's really the main person that speaks in it. Um, and obviously it's just because we didn't get any of them in the Force Awakens, and now they're really hammering home like. Hey, he's in this movie, even in the the poster which came out, which is a great callback to the original Star Wars movie. Yeah. You see, uh, on one side it's Adam Driver's face, and then on the other side it's just Mark Hamill's face, but it's like three times the size. <laughs> like he's he's definitely in this one, guys. But I, I it, it, it's great because I mean, if you've listened to interviews with Mark Hamill, he doesn't even sound like he used to. Uh, which was con- you know going to concern me a little bit, but even when this trailer came out, he sounded just like Luke Skywalker again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know he's been uh, working out to look more like like he should be, I guess, in the row. Yeah, yeah, and he looked great. The you know five seconds you saw him in the Force Awakens, I, like the he, I love the look of his character. Um, oh yeah, totally, very, very Ben Kenobi of him. Yeah, yeah, but a uh, like. Even just in that one scene, you could tell, like, this guy's he's not doing well. <laughs> and yeah. I'm really excited to see, uh, I'm excited to learn more about, um, obviously, what happened all those years ago with the temple. And we kind of know more about that. Uh, you know, stuff has come out in books and various things. I think one of the big things that kind of came out for Kylo Ren's character is a big reason why he turned um, to the dark side is supposedly because he learned of his lineage of, you know, Anakin being Darth Vader and that kind of, you know, I'm sure Snoke introduced that to him. But it also makes me think that maybe Luke even had these thoughts of kind of finding a balance and, you know, kind of towing the line between light and dark before Rey. And he, he that may have even led, maybe he tried to do the same thing with uh, his nephew and that is why he lost him to just the, you know, lost him to the dark side which could be a really great concept to introduce. That would be cool. And, and add more to, yeah, exactly. And it add more to this guilt that Luke feels. Cause he's like, oh, I really fucked this one up. <laughs> yeah, he's so, he's so guilty. He look, he yeah. just, you can tell he just hadn't been sleeping good on those rocks and the way <laughs> just keeping him up. Well, at the end of the force awakens, he, uh, he has this look on his face. Like he was expecting this and he didn't want it to happen. Yeah. He's just like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. should not have left that map. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's going to be, I'm really excited. This is like, uh, Thor Ragnarok was the movie of the year for me, but then I've completely just slipped my mind until yesterday or, you know, the other day, like, Oh yeah, Star Wars is coming. I think for some reason I thought the Han Solo movie was coming this year and I just didn't care, but now I'm, I'm back on board guys. I'm really excited. I was, I was literally (laughs) at work and I got a, like a notification on my phone, like, Oh, stream the live star Wars, uh, last Jedi panel now. So I'm like, I'm, (laughs) I'm literally driving my work van. (laughs) I have my phone on my dashboard in front of my speedometer and it's plugged up to the aux cord and it's just turned up as loud as it can go in the van. I'm going like stop and go traffic. And then they're like, all right guys, you ready for the trailer? And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, they're about to do this to me. <laughs> I was a little worried that they were going to fade out when they showed the audience the trailer. Like, yeah, they've they do done that, that before. But, um, no, they just went into it. And they started, I heard that music. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I got to pull over. But I kept going. And uh, I, nothing yeah, else I, mattered. That, <laughs> Dylan only ran over five people that day. That's what I was saying. I, I was about to say, I'm glad that, like, or I find it funny that, what worried you is that you weren't going to see the trailer and not that you were in traffic, no. uh, not paying attention. Not at all. <laughs> I'm glad to see, it's glad to see you have, uh, your priority straight. I feel like that would have held up in court. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure you were, I'm sure, uh, it's part of your insurance <laughs> policy. I'm sure you're covered for that. Uh, but yeah, it was a really good trailer. Um, 
Sean, I'm glad you liked it as well. Like I, like I said, you're not as attached to Star Wars as me and Dylan are, but it's good to see. Uh, a lot of people think I don't like Star Wars. I like Star Wars just fine. Well, see, that's what but, makes me think you don't like Star Wars is because anyone well, who actually likes it would I don't not say they don't. Over it. Like, <laughs> I'm not saying you two obsess over it, but uh, I, don't, I don't go into it like some people do. Like, like what's your favorite model of astromech? <laughs> I, I have no idea what you just said there. But, um. yeah, I think part of it is... Um, That's Dylan's first I, I day question. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never grew up with the Star Wars movies, so I think, and I think you kind of have to to really get a big appreciation for them. Like, I sat down and I watched, like, the back then six Star Wars movie when I, movies when I was a teenager, and I was like, these are pretty good. About half of them are crap. <laughs> Let's move on to the next thing. Yeah, and I'm not one of those fans where I'll defend the prequels to my life. I know they're crap. <laughs> uh, but I think it is just, it, it, like, it is for a lot of people, it is just this, it's this phenomenon that just kind of yeah. became a part of my life. It is, like, a huge part of my like my, my world. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I love it as much as I do is the effect it does have. Um Obviously, good and bad. There's more bad Star Wars stuff. I'm afraid to say than, or I'm ashamed to say than there is good. But it looks like it's slowly turning around. <laughs> I like the last two. They're really, they're pretty good. Yeah, um, and Disney so. has definitely grabbed that mantle and just like ran shook with all it. the crap off of it, basically, <laughs> and just gave us pure Star Wars into our souls. Yeah, I think in the best way possible. Get, yeah, I think they get what this is. I think like they get what people kind of want to see when they go into this. It is an event um, again, and it is just like you know the stories, like the stuff of the stories. You know, it's getting better, um, but even then, they know like there's certain things you you just you have to nail like um, to kind of just grab that heart that the originals had. Um, and a lot of people, you know, I know, I know. I, I know that the last, the Force Awakens was, you know, a bit of a rehash of the original, um, but I, I think that was kind of the thing to do to get people back on board with this franchise. Um, well, and I like those characters. I'll say, I'll say one thing added. about the Force Awakens: J.J. Uh, Abrams, it is more or less a remake of A New Hope, but I think what he did really well was he made it feel like a Star Wars movie, because like the prequels. Exactly. They felt like they were almost in a different universe. Like <clears throat> everything felt different compared to the original trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give them credit for it that. Is, it, yeah, and like I said, I think that was the way to do it, um, which is partly why they kind of got him on board. Because I mean, that is his. <laughs> that's the strength as a director is he knows how to he knows how to remake a movie. I like the guy, but <laughs> I am like I'm excited to see Ryan Johnson's version, um, this new version, a lot more i think this is going to be a different movie i am waiting though because this obviously has a darker tone i'm waiting for someone to come out who's part of disney or star wars or whatever and do that thing that everyone does where it's like this is the this is the empire strikes back of this movie because everybody does that so now they're going to turn it around and be like this is the empire strikes back of star wars movies wink (laughs) wink (laughs) uh i mean they didn't really do that with attack of the clones but no, it's just a common thing. Like whenever a it, more so, with like it's just that thing with oh, other yeah, trilogies. Definitely, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, but yeah, ready for it. Oh, December is such a good month. Such a good month now. <laughs> I know. And it's like one month we get Thor, and the next month we get Star Wars. Uh, if we can make it that long. <laughs> I know. All this, all this other crap going on. In the world, well, we got. But we don't talk about that. No. <laughs> we get they. They're. This is this will. They said they confirmed this will be the last season of Star Wars Rebels. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but they did also confirm that Ahsoka's still alive, and I know you're an Ahsoka fan. I do. I enjoyed her. I was. Uh, I'm glad when they brought her back in Rebels. Um. And, wow. Okay. I'll, I'll see her again when she shows up. She's got this cool lightsaber now, man. Oh yeah. She could be a gray Jedi, apparently. Yeah, yeah. They've the introduced that concept with her. The canon thing where, oh, however you feel is what color your lightsaber is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty... I don't like that, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, but, yeah, really great Star Wars stuff. We'll keep up 
we'll uh, stay up to date on it, I'm sure. I know I will. I know Dylan will. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell Sean about it. I'll, I'll occasionally read something and be like, okay. Huh. <laughs> be like, huh. All right. Well, uh, that about wraps up our uh, our main topics today. Um, thanks for getting us through that, Dylan. We really appreciate no you. No problem. But uh, <laughs> you think uh, you might want to stick around for uh, one more segment of the show? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the kind of enthusiasm I never get out of Sean. Take note. <laughs> okay, okay, let, let, but, uh, let me try. Let me try. I am just so excited for this next segment. I just, I'm just bursting to the seams with optimism and joy. How, how is that? <laughs> it's a pretty good show. All, right. if, all you listeners out there, just, you know, if you're walking, if you're driving, just close your eyes for a minute. It doesn't matter. Just imagine a face with no emotion, none, and that is Sean Doyle. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. A statue. He's, Thank he's you, a statue. <laughs> it's certainly, <laughs> certainly a nicer thing than I'd have to say about you, Sean. So, <laughs> wow, wow. No, you're, you're pretty good. Pretty good. I wouldn't have anyone else on this podcast, Sean. You know that. Um, well, uh, Dylan, since you're our spe- very special guest, would you like to uh, introduce this new segment of the show and tell the people what it's about and uh, start us off? Is it the check? This the check it out <laughs> segment, right? Wow, yeah, and it's we're going to check out. some stuff out. <laughs> um, I clearly made a good choice by giving you the giving you the reins. I just uh, I, I know the the show's formula. I that's that's always a good sign. <laughs> Nine episodes in, and uh, we're already predictable. So <laughs> yeah. what we were shooting for, but yeah, we're going to check some stuff out. So uh, tell the All people right, what it is. Um, I've watched a couple I watched the trailer for a new movie that is coming out with Rooney Mara and Casey Affleck called A Ghost Story and it's they've all, all they've released is the trailer but you guys should check it out it looks like a great movie I think I've actually seen that because I remember when that that got shortly put up after uh, the Oscars and like Casey Affleck won so I know they were pushing it is that the thing where in the trailer they're kind of going through a room and you just hear like this ominous music and screaming or something. I don't know. It's it. No, it's, it's not, it's not at all a scary movie. It's, um, it's almost like a small indie film. It's literally a ghost, like a guy in a sheet, but he kind of like, he's, he's died, but he can go around and look at things that are still happening after he's passed. Like he can see what's still going around and how people are remembering him after he's died and it just looks really interesting to me hmm. but it's you said it's not a horror movie it's just kind of like is it i guess he can't move on and so he's kind of just exploring yeah, what other people are in his life are doing i guess yeah it's not a horror movie but it's got that element of supernatural mixed in with you know good feelings Sad did feelings, t- happy feelings. Did did he come back with like? Did his ghost form come back with a sheet, or did he just put a sheet on? No, his his, his ghost form came back, and then he he had the sheet on. <laughs> He's like, this is just a good sheet. Is Casey Affleck under the sheet? I think it might be Casey Affleck because you see him lying dead <sighs> on the table. Oh, <laughs> uh, I hope it's just an hour and a half of Casey Affleck walking around with a sheet on his head. He I'll would do something that. like that. He would. <laughs> I give him an Oscar for it, <laughs> but I, I like uh, checking out weird films like that. No, that sounds actually pretty interesting. Uh, I enjoy, always enjoy a kind of a, a good concept of a, uh, you know, where we go after after death, or you know, people getting, you know, they can't pass on for whatever reason, and they've got to got to learn a little bit about themselves as a person. I mean, and maybe get a new sheet. I'm sure that sheet gets dirty after a while. <laughs> Yeah, he was dragging it on the ground the whole time. <laughs> oh, he is uh, gross. Uh, well, that sounds. I'll, I'll definitely check that. You said it's called a, a ghost story. Yes, a ghost story. It looks a ghost looks story. Good. All right, cool. I'll, I'll definitely check that out. Sean, what have you been up to this week? What have you been looking into? Well, uh, season three of Better Call Saul started, so I watched the first episode of that. Oh, nice. Okay. I have not seen any of it. <laughs> bra, bra, bra. Get into it. I know, I know. I'm getting as bad as Dylan with TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's great. It's uh it's a different beast from Breaking Bad, but it's I mean the writing's right up there with it. 
And it's very, like, the show really takes its time, you know, getting into the characters' heads and the decisions they make and everything. And, uh, I mean, there, there was a scene last season where you just had, like, this long tracking shot of, like, how drugs were being put inside of a truck. And while I was sitting there, I was like, you know, it's really good to, like, be back into this world. So, yeah, Snoop, get into it. Come on. What are you, what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> I'm not the only one here, Sean. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan get into it. <laughs> Dylan, I still on. have to watch Breaking Bad. What the heck? Oh, wow. I've not watched Breaking Bad. I've not watched Game of Thrones. I've not watched Sons of Anarchy. I've not <laughs> watched any of the DC Marvel or the DC TV. I haven't watched House of Cards. I haven't watched. Uh... <laughs> just get it all out on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Just, throw, just throwing it uh, all out there. So don't ask me about that. <laughs> I haven't watched it. Really put the pressure on him. Uh, he's got all He's got uh, all defensive. Well, <laughs> That's why I'm not a, a regular part of the show. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna really use your Netflix account this week, Dylan. I'll get you caught up. Yeah, a lot of it's on Netflix now. But yeah, um, I, I I've heard the show is really great. Um, definitely didn't expect when it was announced. I was just like, I mean, obviously, I, I kind of wanted to go back to this world that Breaking Bad established, but. I didn't think that that was the best way to do it, but I've heard it's really, really yeah, good. I didn't, so. I didn't know how it was going to work out either, but it has. And I think what is smart is um, the character of Saul Goodman. You don't really know anything about his backstory, like on Breaking Bad. So because of that, he was a good character to explore. Yeah. And, um, and he, he, he is definitely interesting because he has all these, because he's not a bad guy, but. You know, he wants to always take the easy way out, and he's always looking for a loophole to get through situations, and he just kind of, like, slides through life, and that's finally catching up to him in the show. So he's got to, you know, he's having to put some actual... It's odd, because he has to put actual effort into, like, being lazy now, <laughs> which is interesting to watch. Uh, that's great. Do you, um... You know, well, I was going to say, you know those people back in school who really... They would go really out of their way to cheat on tests... And they put more effort into cheating than somebody would if they just studied for the test. Talking to one right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's that's kind of Saul Goodman. So you can relate, is what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, I Bob Odenkirk's great. Um, I love the character of Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad. Um, so I and I've heard the show is great. So I'm. I'll, it's one of those things I'm definitely going to get around to. I think the first two seasons are on Netflix now. Yeah. So I'll probably probably look into it uh, pretty soon. Here, I'm almost done checking out a couple other shows. Uh, do you, just one more quick question about it. Does it kind of have a sense of an imp or do you get a sense of an endpoint in this now that we're in the third season? Yeah, or? Um, I think it's, the show takes place in 2002. I think, you know, the Saul Goodman's not his actual name. It's Jimmy McGill. Yeah. James McGill. So he's called that on the show. So it's kind of watching him tran you know, transform from James McGill into Saul Goodman. That's yeah. Kinda the point that of it. Persona. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I, I don't imagine that's a show they would want to kind of stretch out longer than three or four seasons. And it seems like a lot of people who did the Breaking Bad stuff are on on it. Um, yeah. you know, still working on it. So I have faith in that team to finish out strong. But yeah, uh, I'll look into it. Dylan, watch Breaking Bad. Uh, I and then look into that as well. I may or may not. Let's do, <laughs> let's do it for Sean. He probably won't, guys. Well. I guess I'll tell you guys about what I've been checking out. I know you're just eager to hear it. I can see you just, just I was gonna, jumping in your seats right now. I was going to ask, <laughs> but you just kind of let yourself go. So <laughs> I, I, I just assume. It, it's a very, I mean, you can ask Sean. It's just, that's usually how the show works. Uh, so get used to it. <laughs> um, but no, I, I finally, as you guys know, I enjoy a good, good video game here and there. Um, and I finally caved and, I bought one of those Nintendo Switch consoles, uh, and I'm I'm really enjoying the one game they have out. <laughs> uh, Legend of Zelda: The Breath of the Wild came out back in March, and I finally just I got tired of looking at it, and I just I went and bought it, and I've been playing it for about a week now. I think I'm maybe like an hour worth into the game, and I'm loving every bit of it. This is a you know what he's talking about. This is an no. instance. <laughs> And, oh, I'm telling you guys about it, so calm down. So how many you lost me more switch? The, how many mushrooms do you have to eat to get bigger? <laughs> oh, there are mushrooms in this game, actually. Uh, 
Well, I mean, you guys know a little bit about the Legend of Zelda, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's a guy walking it. around with a in a green outfit. He's got a cool <laughs> cape. Well, anything, <laughs> anything you think you know about him, just forget oh, it because goodness. they've completely they revamped the entire thing, guys. It's it's really interesting because Nintendo's a it's a studio or not studio. It's a company that's everyone knows is more or less just set in their ways. They have a very specific formula. They know you know what works for them and they just do that so it they they just kind of threw all that out the window with this latest zelda game um they introduced open world so you can more or less just run around do what you want um and they've made this game extremely challenging i've died so many times just by like randomly running into a couple of you know one people who should be like one or two hit kills and that's something that's never happened to me in a zelda game before uh which i think is great i think they're finally realizing that they are getting left behind in this uh, in this industry. I don't think any other company would still be around uh, with doing things the way they have done them in the past. I think their legacy has definitely carried them and kind of kept them afloat. But it seems like they're actually pushing to make a change with this new console and this game because um, this game is it mm. is a true masterpiece. I've I haven't even really done any of the main story, but there's just so much in this world. This world wow. is massive. And it's to play it on this console has been actually quite fun. Like I wasn't, you know, a hundred percent on board of having to spend the money to get it, but I'm glad I did. Cause I could take it, you know, the big thing about the switch is you could take it on, you know, it could be handheld or it's console. almost, it's almost like you can switch it. I mean, switch it out, Sean. There you go. You're getting when on I was board a kid, now. <laughs> the switch wasn't a toy. <laughs> was, well, I had to go pick a switch, and uh, then you get older, and it becomes a toy for some people. <laughs> uh, you guys are dick. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give me a hard time, Steve. Uh, it's fine. I get uh, it. Uh, but no, I, like I said, uh, you guys obviously this isn't for you, but uh, I, I, I'm sure as the the year goes along and more games come out for this console if this if any of their other games like there's a new mario game coming out later in the year if it's if they've done to that what they did to this zelda franchise um i'm i'm back on board with nintendo and i haven't really been in a long time i really i've just played their handheld stuff everything else has just been kind of you know we fit and uh, mini games and that's the last thing I want as a gamer I want like a full fleshed out uh, world that I can you know get invested in and this gave me that so yeah uh, really great choice on my part uh, for entertainment bad financial choice that's a, <laughs> well, that's a lot okay. of money I just blew yeah so uh, <laughs> yeah anything else still you've been checking out there? well to add to snoops uh, I did have somebody today like I was telling them, like, hey, I'm going to be a special guest on the podcast. And they were like, oh, I checked it out for the first time. I really liked it. And somebody did say, hey, I wish Snoop would talk a little bit more about video games. <laughs> so I was, you guys are always looking for is criticism. Somebody, is it somebody that we know? Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? Uh, good old Nolan. Oh, Freshly. okay. All right. Well, I'm glad I could help. I don't know that person, but I'm glad I could help. Shout out. out for Nolan. What's his name? Nolan? Yeah. All right. Well, unnecessary shout out for Nolan. But just thanks for listening to the show, man. It's his last day uh, working at Freshway. He's quitting. So congratulations, you got through it. Now, now everybody <laughs> on the podcast knows where me and Dylan works. That's uh, that's good. <laughs> just gonna be swarmed by fans, guys. Um, I don't work there anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, well, so. Yeah, uh, Dylan gave me a movie that I checked out a few days ago. Uh, I really liked it, A Monster Calls. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one with Liam Neeson, right? Yeah. it's um, And Felicity Jones. And Dylan's crush, Ooh. Felicity Jones. She's great. Uh, yeah, it made no money, and I understand why, because it's kind of... It kind of looks like a kid's movie, but it's really not, so it's one of those, like, who is this for type of things. But, yeah, it's – so you have this kid who's – his mother is dying of cancer, and to kind of cope with this, he imagines a giant tree monster who tells him he appears at 12.07 only, and he starts it off by saying, I'm going to tell you three stories, and then you're going to tell me a story. And, like, all the stories are really interesting. Like, there's – like, the stories are animated, and it's good animation behind it. 
and the lessons, like, they're good lessons, too. It's not like your typical kid lessons are like, you know, stuff doesn't always work out. Life is hard. You know, a lot of times stuff is just fair just because it's, or a lot of times stuff is unfair just because that's how stuff, you know, it works out. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a very, uh, very strict time schedule that monster has he only shows up at 12 <laughs> yeah. he's literally like i have other things to do <laughs> <laughs> fair enough um you uh, know what i also started reading i don't know sean you read a lot of things uh stephen king's it oh you have you you've never read that before no oh okay cool yeah that's you you're a big fan of of the king aren't you you read a lot of yeah, his books i've yeah surprisingly i've never read uh it I didn't realize how long it was to actually start it into it. It's over a thousand pages long. Yeah, it's a it's a hefty book. Yeah, but I'm I'm liking. It. I'm a few chapters in. It's really interesting. <laughs> you read about? Did you get to the part where that kid hits his head? Yeah, it's pretty That's like at the very beginning. I know pretty it's much. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad they put that in that next one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I, there's been a couple of uh, set pictures again that have uh, come out, and that clown still looks pretty terrifying oh yeah i saw that just a few uh before we started this podcast i saw that Ugh. is it the one where it's like it's on the camera screen yeah 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 exactly yes that's and his just... like eyes are rolled back oh my god it's creepy that is that's terrifying as did did stephen king did he create the the scary clown were they like did no, he that'd been, that'd been around for a while or, hey, i guess he just pushed him in a whole nother way yeah <laughs> I think phobia is the fear of clowns. You learned something today. I think clowns are uh, fighting back this movie because they're saying it's taking away their work because now kids yeah. are terrified of them again. They just got over the last one. <laughs> it's a tough life to have as a clown, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, you'll definitely have to let me know how that is. I, I will not read that book. I, I know it'll <laughs> take me down. I'm just... Just yeah, you have a me. fear of clowns, don't you? I have a fear of clowns. I do. What? I have also, I did not a fear know this. of yeah, they terrify me. I, I think it was that that first movie that just kind of hammered it home for me. Well, now just, I know what I'm getting you. For <laughs> just to let everybody know how much of a dick I am, um, I was over at Snoop's house one day, and I changed the wallpaper on his computer to like a scary clown. So when he turned <laughs> his computer kidding. on, he saw that. You son of a bitch! <laughs> oh, that would really oh. That's why I live two hours away now. <laughs> <laughs> got to get out. I got to get out of here. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll have to see that movie. That movie when it comes out, though. I'm sure we'll have to do it. We're contractually obligated to watch a lot of things now. Uh, yep. So, ugh. But yeah, that I I haven't really. I've been checking out a couple other things, but I'm gonna actually save them for next episode because I'm not quite finished with them. I, most of it has been playing Zelda. I've got to get my money's worth out of that console. So, and I've been dying a lot. If you are if if you're thinking about getting a Switch, um anyone who's listening and you're not sure if you should get it just for that one game, I'd say it's worth it. Um especially if you love Zelda as much as I do, that is that's a masterpiece of a game, but that's that's all I, that's all I've got to say for today, boys. Um if you guys are ready to end the show, I think Think we can do that? Let's end it. I need a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> it's been about uh, what an hour and minute. two minutes. I'm surprised. I, I thought you left a couple times to go get to uh, have a smoke break. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been blowing but, smoke in my face this whole episode. <laughs> uh, it's real bad for your asthma, <laughs> but he just doesn't care. Uh, but <laughs> I don't have asthma. <laughs> All right, Nick. Sean has no weakness. In that case, uh, <laughs> uh, in, in that Except case, for, uh, uh, <laughs> oh man, what's his guilty pleasure uh, franchise? <laughs> oh, he enjoys yeah, the, the purge. purge. This is only weaknesses. Why? Why? What? Gets why him every this time. This episode about Fate of the Furious. <laughs> every other podcast is probably talking about Fate of the Furious right now. To sum it all up, we don't yeah. care. <laughs> It's a lot of Dom, evil, evil <laughs> Dom. Oh, uh, I told you on this yesterday. Uh, you know what I found out is in Japan, uh, apparently, like they don't call him the Fast and the Furious for some reason. I think it's just how it's pronounced. Um, it just doesn't translate. Uh, so they call him uh, instead. They call him like 
Super Speed or Max Speed is the name of the franchise. And in the sequels, they name each sequel after a particular thing that they see. Um, so this one is called like M- Max Speed uh, Ice Break. Just because of that one scene from the trailers where they're that's racing so that submarine, Japanese of them. <laughs> and they should have named it. Yeah, like, well, that's the thing. I think shot. No, boom, 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 well, no. I think it's a better way. Like in Sean mentioned this yesterday, I think it's the, the better way to name them because that makes keeping up with them a lot easier for me. <laughs> it's just naming them after a particular <laughs> yeah. set piece. Uh, I think the last one was called Sky because they jump out of the the skyscraper or whatever. I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure those movies are just terrible. <sighs> Someone likes them, yeah. But and me and, me and you, Snoop, have talked about this. Um, there's certain things we have to watch for this podcast, but that is not one of we're them. We're not going to go out of our way <laughs> to watch something we have no interest in just to make an episode out of it. Oh, I am uh, just kind of to spring it on you and make sure it's in the podcast, so you have to do it, Sean. Uh, I am going to make you watch Baywatch and review it with me. Oh, no. <laughs> mm, that sounds like a terrible, terrible oh, podcast. I'll yeah, definitely skip Hey, out. Snoop, I'll definitely watch it. Wink. <laughs> Boy, am I looking forward to Baywatch. Wink. You're going to watch it. But if I have to do the Blade trilogy episode. <laughs> what? What do you have against Blade? They're good movies. I know. I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, let's end the show. We've <laughs> You'll spend a third of that movie saying... Dwayne the Rock Johnson the whole time. You just you can't say the Rock. You have to say Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I will. So that'll take up a good third of the episode. <laughs> That's fine with me. But anyway, let's end the show so Dylan can smoke and the listeners can get on with their their important lives. Uh, so thank if you guys like this episode and you like our special guest Dylan again. Thanks Dylan for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I hope to do more of these in the future. Oh yeah. Come back anytime, man. We're happy to have you. Like I said, I enjoy your enthusiasm compared to Sean. <laughs> wow, you. you just... You know, I do this every week, Snoop, and you just throwing me <laughs> under the bus. Like, I okay. am. I'm just kidding. I'm, I love having you here, Sean. Uh, but anyway, if you like this episode and you wouldn't mind listening to any of our uh, other episodes, you can find those on SoundCloud and iTunes. We're also putting them up on YouTube. If you want to get in touch with me or Sean on Twitter do that i'm at snoop underscore lynch on twitter sean is at the first sean but if you want to if you want to talk to us just as a group on uh we got a gmail account yeah. now it's the probably unnecessary gentleman the better way at gmail.com. to reach us it's it's definitely the better way to reach yeah. sean uh, i'll be honest yeah if you just I haven't looked at twitter <laughs> in probably three weeks fair enough but if you want to if you want to send us a letter or an email or whatever um and just tell us how you feel about the show want to suggest something we should check out or tell us what you're checking out. Um, so, yeah, the unnecessary gentleman at gmail.com. We'd, and if we'd you want to find me, guys. then hmm? too bad. You're not going to. <laughs> Unless I already know you. But if you if you don't know me, then <laughs> and, uh, you're not going to. In this episode's description, I'm going to leave directions to Dylan's house. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but yeah, um, I said thanks to anyone who listens to the show. If you recommend it to anyone. That'd be great. If you want to leave us a review on iTunes, we'd really appreciate that as well. Um, and join us next week for our next episode where I promise Sean, we, we're going to talk about uh, <laughs> DC live action shows. You know, the CW stuff like Arrow and uh, The Flash. Not Supergirl. I'll talk a little bit about it. But we're going to talk about all the classics. The 90s Flash, Birds of Prey, <laughs> the George Reeves Superman. So, so much <laughs> all good that, stuff. All, all that good stuff, Sean says. But yeah, um, until then... Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. All right, bye. Bye. Bye.